welcome and thank you for joining us for this second Cultivating Conversation series. As a sector, agriculture faces a huge challenge if we're going to do our part in meeting the Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. We are convening this discussion on agricultural technologies because we believe that innovation is and will be instrumental in feeding the growing world population. It will also require the transformation of food systems towards more sustainability and equity, better nutrition and diets, and an improved protection and resilience of our ecosystems. For OCP, our challenge is to provide innovative plant nutrition solutions to growers so that they can increase their productivity and improve their value proposition while at the same time meeting new sustainability commitments. Furthermore, as a global leader in this space, it is also our role to provide products that themselves are made with a lower footprint. And with that, we've committed to carbon neutrality as a company by 2040. We need many solutions to get there. And we are excited to discuss today with our speakers the topic of technologies for the future of food system. My name is Jill Oliver, and I'm the founder and CEO of Hello Tractor. Hello Tractor is an agricultural technology company that came into the market to fill a massive gap of farmers in need of mechanization services. Now, we started this business uh, because we saw a massive gap. Farmers across Africa and Asia plant late, undercultivate their land, and lose income because they don't have access to labor or mechanization. And so as a business, we saw this problem uh, and within that saw an opportunity to provide technology to support machine owners who can service these farmers, but do it in a way that protects their commercial interests while delivering impact across the last mile. And so our solution, obviously, as an as a ag tech company, was, was technology. And we built this platform under the motto of come for the tool, uh, stay for the farmers, and grow with financing. And what that means for us is first growing the supply of equipment in the market by delivering an IoT solution where tractor owners can remotely monitor and manage their equipment, their operators, their maintenance, fuel, minimizing fuel theft and maximizing fuel efficiency. Uh, while connecting to farmers who are booking for services through community-based agents who can aggregate demand and ensure that bookings are going in at economies of scale, ensuring that these tractors are efficiently servicing the demand. The, the, the universal constant across our business really is using innovation uh, to push inclusivity um, for both mission and margin. And we talk a lot about mission and margin within our, within our company. But when we talk about inclusivity, you can really separate that out into kind of three distinct buckets. Uh, first of all, and, and most importantly, and something I'm very passionate about, is building a technology company that hires people that represent the markets that we operate in. Uh, what that provides us as a technology company is super talented, young people who in, are intimately familiar with the problems that we're hoping to solve. And the last piece is collaboration. And a lot of times, especially with startups, because you're young and you're still getting your legs underneath you, collaborating with others, big companies or small, um, can be seen as a threat. But we work with some of the biggest corporations to support us in offsetting the cost of customer acquisition, smallholder farmers are a very expensive group to do business with, uh, and the customer lifetime value is, is relatively small. And so amortizing the cost of that acquisition across uh, multiple stakeholders who also have benefits and working across, across the last mile to support that customer, uh, not only provides our customers with holistic support, uh, but it also helps us to reduce our cost of acquisition. This also goes for trade organizations like the Digital Ag Association, um, where we can engage with thought leaders in our industry uh, to share ideas, best practices, and identify areas for synergy. Uh, my question to you is on the issue of non-consumption. So your, your innovation is, is tackling inclusivity, 
what's what's the biggest challenge you you see as an entrepreneur uh, in increasing uh, affordability uh, for uh, the services that you offer? You know, driving down costs for services is is all about the balance of supply and demand in the market, just like um, the fundamentals in any marketplace. And for us, um, our role as a, as a commercially driven market is to bring as much transparency for our farmer users so that they see and can do cost comparisons with the machinery uh, in, their, in their market. What are some of the ways youth organizations like 4-H or 4-K in Kenya um, mm -hmm. can be helpful in providing a pathway to an organization like yours that will be exciting to them and a way for them to really see agriculture as an enterprise, a lifelong enterprise for them? You know, technology and the ability to leverage technology to reduce drudgery in agriculture, uh, bring a bit of kind of new age tools into these rural communities, drives a lot of benefits across young people and engaging young people to, to work in agriculture commercially, right? I think groups like 4-H are bringing highly trained young people who understand agriculture deeply and can not only use the technology to bring mechanization services, but additional things that we've seen that increase the stickiness between the booking agent and the farmer is other value added services, like a booking agent informing a farmer about good soil management and connecting that farmer to top fertilizer blends that are perfectly suited for their soils. These are things that I think you, uh, these are benefits that you can unlock with these trained young people that 4-H is engaged. And we, and we would love to bring them onto the Hello Tractor platform. In fact, we were exploring something in Ghana um, that I need to revisit with you because I think there's just a ton of value there. We have a family farm and we are in the northern corn belt of the United States. Our farm motto is our soil, our strength. And it's been our motto from the very start. And that was 40 years ago. Now you can imagine things have really changed in 40 years. And today, because of technology, the technology of improvement in machines, and especially that data technology that we're talking about, we've been able to be a lot more sustainable and to really learn how to improve our soils. So we started digitally mapping all our soils about 15 years ago. And it has been, um, to say the least, a learning experience. And um, the data that we have collected, we collect data on everything we do in the field today. This is soybeans, so we're monitoring how many seeds we put per acre also how far apart those seeds are put in the ground, um, the pressure that each of the row units. So if you look, you see we are planting 24 rows at a time. So we're, we're measuring five or six different things just as we put seed in the ground. And um, by collecting this data, you know we know we're doing a good job. We're able to have optimal planting as we go across the field. Um, we also use digital technology. This is actually a drone deploy um, thermal image. So these pictures were both done with the drones and they take that picture and they actually enhance it with uh, technology. And then you can see parts of the field where it's red uh, or it's yellow and it's maybe not uh, thriving as well. We can actually go in there with georeferencing and see what's going on in the field then. Obviously, we have a lot of technology. We have a lot of data. Um, in fact, we have so much data that sometimes it is really overwhelming. And I think most farmers who collect this kind of data will tell you the same thing. So looking forward, um, the things that I'd like to see that I think we will see in the near future are simpler tools. You know, it's been a real learning curve for us. And because we're only using some of this technology a couple of months, a couple of weeks really out of the year, it's a good thing we have good tech support, but we need simpler ways to access and collect this data. It needs to be cost-effective. 
thanks a lot, Nancy. I mean, we've had several conversations in the past and we can do a whole session given the number of topics that you cover from data privacy to access to broadband. And I'm sure Teddy afterwards will have something to say about that. Uh, but I do know that at your farm's level and for the past 40 years, you've spent a lot of time thinking about sustainability. And, and we agree that soils are at the forefront of the sustainability story in agriculture because they regulate water flow, they sequester carbon, they're home to a diverse ecosystem, which provides vital nutrients to animals and humans alike. Uh, so from your perspective, can you tell us how do you see the effect of your work on, this, on the soils of your farm? And uh, do you measure uh, the outcome for soil health uh, um, you know, on a regular basis and to drive your business forward? So, you know, it, we could spend a lot of money and a lot of time measuring. And uh, we measure by yield. And we have seen incredible increases in yields of our farm. And today, if we don't exceed 200 bushel, we feel like we've had crop failure. We've had 250 to, uh, to higher crop yields for us. We do soil tests, uh, but we also know by the earthworms and the uh, microbial activity in our fields that we're doing the right things. We do dig soil pits and we look at the structure. We know we see earthworm burrows down eight to 10 feet. Uh, I can just touch the soil in my hands and, and I know that it's good. I could go out there with a, a hoe and it's mellow and it's beautiful. And then we know that when it rains, we see the water infiltrate. It doesn't run off, but some of our neighbor's fields do so that we have really good water infiltration. And for us, all those are the measurements. We're not doing chemical analysis because it's timely, it's costly. You know, someday, maybe when we know all the things we need to measure to, to um, measure our soil health, maybe we'll get there. But right now, there really are no real definitive measures. And Nancy, thanks so much for that great presentation. I just wanted to ask you quickly, I work with the World Initiative for Soy and Human Health, which is a program of the American Soybean Association. And we work in developing and emerging markets. And one of the questions or one of the comments that we get most often is, you know, your technology in the United States is radically different from the technology that we have available in our markets. Could you just speak briefly to how much technology has changed or how quickly technology has changed since you started farming? Well, certainly, yeah, that's, that's a big question because uh, we could not map our farms. We didn't have field borders that were digital 40 years ago. Um, we had big machinery, but it didn't steer itself. We didn't have, um, we didn't have technology that prevented overlap of spraying when we sprayed. Um, you know, now you can be in a field set of A, B line for driving and you push a button and the tractor will steer itself across the field. So that kind of technology uh, is incredible. Land Lakes is a um, farmer owned farm to fork cooperative. Um, you know, we have a big presence in the crop input side where we sell seed and crop protection and plant nutrition products to ag retailers, but then work with folks like Nancy uh, on a day to day basis through crop consulting or, or, or uh, agronomy services. Uh, we also have a Purina division where we uh, work with a lot of producers, dairy producers specifically, but also uh, all, all sorts of uh, species. Uh, and we feed those animals, so we have formulations and feed mills that, that then uh, uh, work with different, uh, different retailers that then get these products to, to producers and farmers. And then finally, when you look at those dairy production, that's the other side of our uh, cooperative memberships, our dairy producers, that where we, uh, they produce milk and our organization collects milk from them on every single day. And then we turn that milk into dairy products such as butter, cheese, uh, and lots of other good things you can find at the grocery store. So. When we say it's a farm to fork cooperative, it truly is connected throughout our business and, uh, and, and we live it every single day. So we actually have a business, which is our fourth business unit called Trutera. And in that Trutera business, we're actually looking at the soil and we're looking at different practices that we've sort of gathered through our research as well as a lot of our agronomists out in the field. And we're trying to figure out how we can score a field from, from zero to 100. There's lots of different exciting technologies coming out us as an organization, we're working on a variety of things. There's many different organizations doing this today. Uh, so, I, so I think this is, uh, this is exciting for the industry. 
I think it'll make farmers more productive, it'll make farmers more profitable, and more importantly, it'll make farmers more sustainable. That's all very exciting and a great promise uh, to impact not only the food supply chain, but also uh, climate variability. However, you know, the one thing that even Nancy mentioned and we mentioned a couple of times is broadband. All these fun things and I'm like, guys, I couldn't get a page to load on, a, on an iPad. Like you're talking about bringing like a, 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 a glass that can see through and do holograms and all that. So this broadband thing, you know, we do have to, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a need that we need to tackle. And so we've been very active with the American Connection Project uh, to advocate on the Hill, to make uh, investments available, both at the federal and the state level to be able to invest. And I think we're making, there's lots of states now putting forward that broadband is important and beyond agricultural productivity, it has an impact on education, has an impact on healthcare, because in those rural communities now, how do you connect to a doctor or a nurse when it's 80 miles away? Um, the schools, you saw it with COVID, people are staying at home. So, you know, the kids have to go to school. So before it was about doing homework virtually, now it's actually about going to school. So we have to remedy that problem. And we're actively engaged with a lot of different uh, technology providers to actually install uh, fixed wireless solutions or bring in fiber to the home and continuing to promote that uh, in, in, into the space because we think it's very important for the vibrancy of rural communities, but it's also very important for the resiliency of our food supply chain. What's interesting about Lando Lake's approach is that you're really talking with a lot of stakeholders on the value chain. So as you think about this notion of transforming food systems, how important it is to you and as a recommendation for the audience to actually bring people from the whole value chain, including downstream from the growers, uh, to help tackle some of these sustainability issues and leveraging technology doing so. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. And, and, and I think that's, that's part of the, you know, we always talk about traceability in the food supply chain, right? And I, and I think traceability is important. I think that's a goal we'll get to at some point, but what's even more important is transparency, right? It's for all players along in that, in that food supply chain, including consumers at the very end, to actually know what happens throughout the food supply chain and what are the choices that we make downstream that have an impact upstream, right? In a lot of cases, when we go to the store and we want things just available in the store, well, in order for that store to make them available, they have to have an oversupply, right? To make sure that when every single person walks up that what they need is, is what they want is there. So just kind of, kind of connecting all the dots and connecting the supply with the demand and folks knowing where things are along the way, what could go wrong, I think that transparency will help quite a bit of players start to collaborate with one another in trying to solve problems that are one connected to one another versus just sort of, I live in my own little silo and there's an input and an output at the end of the day. I think that's what the technology can help do is connect those dots, bring that transparency and continue to encourage collaboration. I thought it'd be interesting to ask you um, about any d data development needs to make this kind of approach like Trutera, um, make it work well for farmers in the African context so that they can also participate that when they uh, change their farm management and bring on new technologies that, that they that, that generate conservation and sustainability, how do they document that? How do they, how do they get benefit and, and sort of broaden their income streams? Yeah, great, great question. Um, and one of the things I mean, we've learned even in some of the work we've done in South Africa is we actually, you know, not knowingly at the beginning, we just said, oh, we have this great technology like satellite imagery or tissue sampling. Let's take it over and see how it works there. And we would realize this, you know, if you take the technology as is today, it won't work there because of, again, that more connectivity issues, the devices are not available in, in people's hands. And so what you have to do is you really have to localize the tools and even change the processes in a lot of cases to make it available to, to, to the farmers in those local communities, right? Uh, what are some of the things that, uh, that we should have ready uh, to present to companies like Land Lakes or like other investors um, in regard to getting buy-in uh, in support for these facilities that will not only increase on-farm revenues through direct contracting, uh, but also create economic opportunities in rural communities. From a farming perspective, it sounds like, you know, you, you could have a good value proposition there. You know, downstream, you have to have the demand of where it's going to go and to make sure that those companies that are uh, kind of sort of in the, it's an input for them an output for, for, from the farming standpoint, um, do see that they will be able to reimburse for all the costs that we're putting up front, right? So can we build the right economic model that works for everyone involved? And then if that's the case, then you can, we can look to even more partnerships, whether it's with cooperatives, uh, whether it's with basic manufacturers in that case situation, where we can put up these facilities in the right places and then also promote the right practices, I think going forward. Um, and, and again, it's, it's finding that, that balance, right? 
my question is more in terms of uh, supporting a model which support rural communities transformation. There's a lot of discussions today you all have alluded on that how different innovators are trying to support that. But is there a model which work holistically for that uh, transformation? Y yes, I, I think ultimately, I mean, what we see is that, you know, if you look at a rural community today, there's investments that has to happen in order to diversify that. You have to have different equipment, you have change of practices, you got to have different consultants that come to your farm and all those kind of things is the demand downstream available so we have to sort of open those channels and avenues and you know as, as consumers change their, their preferences that actually may happen right now not only can they start to apply these more technologically advanced practices and tools and all that in that community but they can also do other things working remotely right and so then all of a sudden the vibrancy of that local community starts and then you go can we actually have fresh food that now is not only available to that local community, but they're now, as they diversify their crops, but can also be quickly transported to other communities. And now something, we've started something there, right? So it's kind of can become a snowball effect from there. So that's why we're so focused on the broadband piece, because we feel like that's like a basic thing that you have to have. It's a, it's a necessity from there the upskilling, people moving back into rural communities, the agricultural productivity, it all starts to kind of build on top of that. Let me start my uh, remarks today with a sobering comment. We are all aware that the world is not on track to achieve SDG 2 or zero hunger by 2030. FAO has estimated that 690 million people, which translates to about 9% of the global population is hungry, and 3 billion cannot afford a healthy diet. It's been further estimated that the COVID-19 pandemic could add up to 132 million food insecure people to this number. So it's clear our food systems are not performing optimally. And of course, the pandemic has prompted all of us to fundamentally rethink the way we produce, process, and consume food. There is no doubt that we need to adopt a holistic and coordinated approach to work collectively and build back better. Now, accelerating and scaling up science, technology, and innovation is key for transforming our food systems and leveraging emerging opportunities for reaching a world free from poverty, hunger, and malnutrition. Now, let me take a couple of minutes to highlight some of FAO's recent digital initiatives. FAO's Hand-in-Hand uh, -hand initiative is an evidence-based country-led and country-owned initiative to help members to accelerate agricultural transformation and sustainable rural development, so to meet SDGs 1 and 2. It is supported by the Hand-in-Hand -hand Geospatial Platform, which guides food security investments, and also the Data Lab for Statistical Innovation, which combines big data and artificial intelligence for decision making. FAO is now looking into a 1,000 digital villages initiative which seeks to identify 1,000 villages across the world to convert them into digital village hubs. And then the international platform for digital food and agriculture is a voluntary and inclusive multi-stakeholder forum to facilitate dialogue on the digitalization of food and agriculture. But I want to emphasize this, it's very important to think of innovation more holistically it is not just about new technologies. It's also about financing, networking, and new business models. So technologies and innovations can accelerate the transformation of food systems and make them more resilient. But these accelerators must be complemented by human capital, governance, and institutions. Unless adapted to the needs of small and medium-sized family farmers and combined with significant investment in rural infrastructure, as well as the training and education of those who would benefit most from them, they may carry the risk of aggravating disparities and existing socioeconomic inequalities. Now, the upcoming UN Food System Summit provides us all with an excellent opportunity to work together to ensure that our agri-food systems are more inclusive, resilient, and sustainable in line with the 2030 agenda of leaving no one behind. And although innovation is context specific, there are many innovations developed in one place, which could be of potentially large benefit for farmers elsewhere. A critical comparative advantage of FAO is its expected ability to draw upon the experience of many countries to suggest different innovative approaches that may be relevant to solving known problems in different contexts in a sustainable and cost-effective manner. 
FAO has reinforced its role as a neutral forum for open and constructive dialogue and exchange of knowledge, also on a wide range of topics. So the global challenges we face today call for international cooperation and solidarity. We need to share knowledge, experience, and best practices. FAO is committed to working with all partners to scale up innovation and disseminate promising technologies for better production, better nutrition, a better environment, and a better life. Thank you. Thank you uh, uh, very much, Preet. I think that uh, uh, you've shed some interesting light on the role of the FAO as a convener when it comes to this issue of innovation as it leads up to the uh, Food Systems Summit. Uh, uh, we have a question from uh, Nick Gerzer, who has left, uh, unfortunately, the car right now, but who leads Tri Society that I think would apply, uh, you would be best starting the answer to it, which is, uh, can you speak to how agronomy and soil science research infrastructure opportunities uh, can enable improved, uh, to, uh, I'm sorry, opportunities to enable improved agricultural productivity and sustainability with smallholder farmers? How can they play a role um, uh, uh, in this uh, uh, lead up to the uh, Food System Summit and uh, to tie in innovation in it? So I'll start with the sustainable soil management. So FAO has been doing a lot of work on that. And uh, in fact, in 2019, FAO, uh, the Code of Conduct on the, uh, the International Code of Conduct on the Sustainable Use and Management of Fertilizer was adopted by a wide variety of stakeholders. Um, the Plant Production and Protection Division in FAO does a lot of work on plant nutrition. And there are a lot of innovative approaches, including conservation, agriculture, agroecology, that can uh, help in sustainable soil management. So um, I'm sure most people are aware there are five action tracks under the Food Systems Summit. And currently, they all have a lot of open fora and dialogues going on where people have been invited to send in two pages about innovative solutions or what are being called the game changers, although there is some uh, discussion around the use of that term. So everyone is encouraged to go on the food system website and it's it's something it's it's supposed to be an inclusive process. Innovation is also one of the four levers that has been identified as cross cutting across the, the five action tracks. Preet, uh, we've uh, Fertilizer Canada has had some very positive discussions with uh, FAO on collaboration. Um, particularly related to our 4 r solution project in uh, Africa, in Ghana, Ethiopia, and uh, Senegal, which is to bring uh, better science-based uh, agronomic uh, decisions on fertilizer to those uh, to smallholder farmers in those countries. The, the question I have is, uh, you know, while we are having a lot of success in the specific regions in Ghana and Ethiopia, where we are working with a total of 80,000 smallholders, our ambitions are, are like yours to be uh, much more uh, uh, successful uh, globally. Um, and we, for example, have a very small program called For Our Champions, where we're offering small micro grants for micro projects across Africa, but we're not getting the uptake that we like. So my question to you is, um, you know, if we're going to accelerate the uh, success of the uh, SDGs, what do we have to do in areas like fertilization uh, in order to get better results a lot faster? One answer, which I think the, uh, a lot of uh, the other speakers maybe haven't uh, spoken to us yet, is the issue of multi-stakeholder partnerships. It's very difficult for one organization or one entity to, in, to just, you know, uh, achieve the SDGs in isolation. So FAO, for example, has a new private sector strategy that was just approved, which talks about FAO playing a more proactive role and a more catalytic role in also engaging with the private sector. And the SDG framework also calls for a very robust private sector engagement. Now, again, I, I mentioned in my previous uh, response also, FAO does have the International Code of Conduct for the Sustainable Use and Management of uh, Fertilizers. And FAO is also very close to finalizing a memorandum of understanding with the International Fertilizer Association in terms of promoting activities for sustainable use of fertilizers, also access to data, soil fertility, sustainable soil management, etc. I think that the final words rightfully go to our grower on the panel. So Nancy, if you want to share some of your wisdom, uh, that would be great. Yeah. Well, I don't know if I have wisdom, but I'm glad to be an agent of change. 
And I would say that no matter with all the technology in the world that we could have and all the data, what what really works well is farmers sharing with other farmers, especially in their own communities. We have a farmer watershed group here in my county, and there are about a hundred farmers that get together every so often, four times a year, to share what they're doing to improve their soils and their cropping systems and to safeguard the environment. And that is really the way we're going to get farmers to change is to, yes, we need to aggregate the data and look at it, but also to share that knowledge. Thank you very much, Nancy. Could not agree more. And we're also glad to have you on our board because listening to what you have say to us directly is always uh, enlightening. So uh, with that, uh, our session comes to a close. Uh, on behalf of us all, I would like to thank Shahil, Nancy, Teddy, and Preet for their time uh, uh, and their wisdom. I believe there is much to digest from what they have shared with us today. Uh, and the quality of the questions and interventions from the audience is a testimony to the value uh, of their experiences and insights. So innovation will indeed play a central role in shaping the future of our food system. A key takeaway uh, from the discussion today is that uh, to meaningfully contribute to this food systems transformation, agricultural innovation will have to consider sustainability as both an objective of its effort, as well as an enabler of its results. It will have to account for farming at all scales and across geographies, uh, and thus will have to be inclusive at heart. Uh, we didn't touch a lot today on the notion of uh, gender, but it's also a key topic uh, in this process. Uh, it will require leveraging data and measurability to enable lasting changes in on-farm practices and provide objective ways to reward growers for the ecosystem services they provide to society. Uh, and finally, it will need the coming together of all of the agricultural value chain stakeholders to ensure that its outcomes enable us to deliver on the vision of the 2030 SDG agenda. So we have much to look forward uh, to at the 2021 UN Food Sum System Summit. With this, I would like to thank our audience for being with us today. Uh, we hope that you have enjoyed the session and that the discussion has helped highlight the importance of technology and innovation for the future of our food systems. Thanks as well to the team that has diligently uh, worked uh, late into the night behind the scenes to make today's session happen. Uh, we look forward to having you all join us again for the next installment of Cultivating Conversation. Uh, thanks again uh, and take care, you all. <laughs>